Triple Champions. And with one month to go, the lead is six and a half in the East. Today, they entertain the rebuilding Cubs, just 8 and 24 since the end of July. Ross Detweiler and the Nats go to work. It's Labor Day at Nationals Park. Good afternoon, everybody. All righty. Who are you? And others giving him great run support. How about the Nats in that St. Louis series? In four games, 32 runs on 48 hits. Hoping to give the Cubs a dose of holiday cheer today. Brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible.
So from the Navy Yard Station right down the street to Nationals Park on a beautiful, beautiful but kind of muggy Labor Day here. Holiday baseball. The Nats have never lost on this day, by the way. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train, so it's 82, but with the humidity, feels like it's high 80s. And it'll be a day when, well, with the flags hanging, not doing a whole lot, the ball could be jumping in the yard today. The Cubs are second from the bottom in the league in batting average and in runs. Only Houston is lower. Starlin Castro, 5 for 13 in that three-game series way back in April, stole four bases. He has 21 steals on the year. He has 10 triples, second in the league, and a budding star have the Cubs with that young all-star shortstop. Ross Deadweiler has started twice against the Cubs in his career. He's 1-1 one one with a 4.35 ERA. It was nice last time out Wednesday at Miami. Got the 8-4 win. Gave up three runs on four hits over five and two-thirds. Struck out four walk one through 95 pitches. 59 for strikes. And it's time for your Mazda defensive alignment today for the Washington Nationals behind Ross Deadweiler. The outfield from left to right, Morse Harper Worth. Infield on the left side, Desmond Zimmerman. On the right side, Espinosa LaRoche and Kurt Suzuki, yesterday's star doing the catch in Mazda. Engineered for the few who care about what they drive and the way it makes them feel because if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And you see Ross Detweiler, his repertoire, fastball in the low 90s. He's been throwing at 85, 86% of the time. That's the average on the year. Curveball 79, changeup, doesn't throw it very often. But the fastball, the two-seamer away from righties. The four-seamer in just moves it around, been throwing it a lot. That 92.6 plays more like 96-97 with the deception in his delivery. Bill Miller, 14-year veteran, has the plate. Rookie umpire Clint Fagan, first base. Mike Estabrook, second. And the crew chief, 24 years of experience. Jerry Lane has third base. So here come the Cubs with Joe Mather leading off. Veteran outfielder, 30 years of age, a 228 career hitter. And he's hitting 211 for the Cubs, and we're underway with a strike. Just a little bit late at 107 Eastern Time. As mentioned, the Cubs, one of the lowest offensive teams in the league, hitting only 240. Houston at 237. And the Cubs have scored the second fewest runs. They are major league guys with bats in their hands, so go out and do your job against this lineup. Darwin Barney and Anthony Rizzo to follow here in the top of the first and Detwater well ahead. Crowd already clapping for a strikeout like they did with Strasburg pitching yesterday. And they're going to get it to start Labor Day. Matt, they're not happy about that call. Now Ross Detweiler going to work early on Labor Day with a strike three look and that's the fastball away. Little two seam tail, little sink on at the end. Good frame by Suzuki gets the call. So far, so good for Ross Detweiler. Start the game with a K. That'll bring in Darwin Barney, the second baseman. One of only four hitters in the lineup today who's ever faced Detweiler. He's 0 for 2. Soriano, Castro, and Dave Sapelt, a former Cincinnati Red, the others. And nothing but strikes from Ross to start things off here. Barney hitting a 258. 26 year old infielder from Portland, Oregon, a Cubs fourth rounder five years ago. Jammed him. Pop fly right field. Jason Worth. Next up will be their first baseman, Anthony Rizzo, who the Nats saw break in at San Diego last year. So since the All Star break, the Nats are playing that 667 baseball, at least near to it. 32 and 18. Darwin Barney, well, he's very reliable at second base. Two errors all year, but none in his last 118 games. And Ross Deadwater keeps the ball in the park, and he's been very good in this park. Anthony Rizzo was supposed to be the Padres' first baseman of the future after they let Adrian Gonzalez go. But then he went to Chicago in a four player deal after coming from Boston in the Gonzalez transaction. He's had some struggles, but he's hitting 287 with 10 home runs. They just think this kid at the age of 23 has a big upside in years to come. He's got power. He broke in while the Nats were in San Diego in the summer of 11, doubled in his first big league game. 
hitting just 169 against lefties this year versus 333 against right handers. And Detwater against lefties, 153. So you like the numbers in the matchup today. Ross' career record of 14 and 20, making his 51st career start. He'll step into his delivery on a 2 2. It's over the second base bag and the mound, but Desmond had him played up the middle. And a very simple strikeout, fly ball, ground out. First inning for Ross Deadwell. there we've got partly cloudy skies today warm and muggy day should be a good day for the pitchers to get loose and the hitters to let it fly see your authorized Dodge dealer experience a world of performance design and fuel efficiency schedule a test drive or go to dodge.com and check out the powerful lineup so Jason worth all over the bases in that St. Louis series did not start the ball game yesterday but on his feet a lot eight runs four RBIs Bryce Harper had a good weekend. Michael Morse getting a lot of base hits lately. Danny Espinosa the same. So here's Jeff Samarja. Eight career appearances, one start back in April against the Nats in the third game of the season, and he went almost the distance to salvage one of that three-game series at Wrigley Field. You see that? Samarja was singing Led Zeppelin as Worth walked in the box. <laughs> he was lip-syncing the song. Nice. I told Jason Worth before the game, I said, by the way, you have the best walk-up song in the big leagues now. And he said, you know, I got it. Got into my hotel room in San Francisco, turned on the radio. It was on an FM station. That song was playing. I said, that would be a sick walk-up song. So now, in my opinion, the best one in the big leagues. And when you have a pitcher serenading you as you walk in the box, <laughs> That'll give you some kind of idea what everybody thinks about. Yeah, it. I agree. That's sick, man. <laughs> Worth hitting 313. And he will fly this one off the end of the bat to right field for Dave Sapelt. One out. Harper and Zimmerman the next two. Let's set the defense for the Cubbies behind Jeff Smarja today. Soriano, Mather, Sapelt in the outfield from left to right. Castro, Vitters on the left side. Barney Rizzo. On the right side, and Wellington Castillo doing the catching for the Cubs. Let me show you what I was talking about a minute ago. Singing the song on the mound. <laughs> he looks like a Zeppelin guy, doesn't he? Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I hear Zeppelin's huge on the Notre Dame campus. <laughs> Here's Bryce Harper, Samarja, former wide receiver there. Big guy, good athlete. Power pitcher. He overpowers Harper. Who hopes this gets out of play, but it won't. Now will they catch it? Josh Vitters does. Two outs. We'll check out Jeff Samarja and what he's going to feature today against the Nationals. Fastball averaging almost 95 miles an hour. The split is his out pitch. That's what he goes to to punch guys out with two strikes. Makes in a little cutter, slider, curve. Through 110 pitches against the Nats on Sunday, April 8th, in eight and two thirds innings. 
Adam Marosh had a two-run homer after an error to knock him out. And the Carlos Marmol, then a save situation, came in and got it. By the way, they're telling us that Carlos Marmol is throwing the ball a lot better now because he's hasn't junked his slider, but he's throwing his fastball a lot more. And a ball to Ryan Zimmerman. This ball high in the air to center. And the Nats will go in routine fashion just like the Cubs did. Pitchers going to work on this day, neither giving up a base runner. for the Luna Double today. Get your second room of flooring free at 877-241-LUNA. Crowd gathering, not a big crowd for a holiday game and nothing much happening so far in this one. Starting pitchers used. Now this is interesting. It's really interesting when you look at the top line and the bottom line. Almost as many catchers as pitchers this year. That's brought to you by Kia. Check out their full lineup of high-quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles to learn more. Visit Kia.com. John Lannan going to jump in that spot after September 12th. Yeah, Lannan and Wong would be those two extra guys other than the regular five. Alfonso Soriano, the former Nat, to Zimmerman on the run. Easy play, four straight for Detweiler to start the game. Ten pitches, eight strikes, first inning. And Steven Strasburg had a win taken away when the Cardinals tied it yesterday. Scheduled to make two more starts. And uh, Christina with more on the Steven Strasburg situation. Well, as you guys just said, uh, it sounds like two more starts, according to the Nationals, that Steven Strasburg will have this season. And he indicated last night that he needed some sort of uh, sit-down or conversation or was looking forward to something with his manager before it's all said and done. Well, this morning, Steve McCaddy, Mike Rizzo, Davey Johnson, and Steven Strasburg did sit down. Davey Johnson called it a nice little conversation. He joked that Steven hates <laughs> Steve McCaddy and Davey more than he did before the meeting. But, you know, it's no secret he said that. Uh, Steven's an intense competitor. He wants to contribute. He's, it's probably eating him up more than anybody involved in this situation. He worked harder than anyone to come back from Tommy John surgery. And this is what you dream about. So Davey said, you know, I know exactly how he feels. Not everybody understands the situation, but it's the right thing to do. Well, if it's killing him right now, mm. what's it going to be like in October? Should the Nats get to the playoff? It's going to be tough. There's Starlin Castro driving one to right. First hit of the game. Worth will have to hurry to keep him from two. Throw is a little bit off the line, and Starlin Castro doubles for the Cubs, his 20th of the year, and that young man can hit. That breaks it up at a little 0 for 7 that he had gone through. When he talked to the Cubs people, Castro with a big contract extension, wondering how he was playing since he signed that deal. Has a little security now. And for a young player to get that kind of security, you're wondering what kind of effort he's putting out. But when you talk to the Cubs people, they say just like before, playing hard, swinging the bat, doing everything he can to help his team win. 
Next up, 25 year old catcher Wellington Castillo, who was hitting 260 at Triple A Iowa this year. Of course, Giovanni Soto gone, traded away, so Castillo, as well as Steve Clevenger, a pair of young catchers. Seven year extension for Castro worth $60 million. That's a lot for a young player. But in the last three years or so of that deal, could be a bargain if he just keeps doing what he's doing now. Could be somebody else's bargain, too. Yeah, the Cubs are going to be one of the most interesting teams in baseball to watch with Theo Epstein there now. I was told this morning most of their organizational talent is at the single A level. So you're looking at a while, and you hope they don't take a good baseball man like Dale Swain. And get impatient with him because they're not winning enough. He's not playing with the bullets other managers are. All those guys in A ball, they're ready, call them up. <laughs> but you know, for a lot of years, the Cubs, their first round draft picks, I had one Cubs broadcaster de describe their first round draft picks of recent years as a graveyard. Just nothing has come of them. They haven't drafted well, they haven't developed players, and now they finally awakened to that fact after all that money spent over the years on free agents. And of course, nobody signifies that more than Alfonso Soriano, who left here after a 40 40 season. And the Cubs have rolled the dice with lots of guys like that. Castillo, three for his last six. And Deadweiler, after a long look, a 1 2 pitch, got him fishing up and away for his second strikeout. You're not the best curveball that Ross Deadweiler has ever thrown. 79 miles an hour didn't really do anything. And sometimes those are the best pitches. As a hitter, you're thinking, well, that's going to break in the strike zone. I got to protect. It stays up and away. Last minute swing gets him. Next up is the third baseman, Josh Vitters. Who's batting 085 at the big league level this year? He's a rookie, former California player of the year at Cypress High School. Six years in the minor leagues, and he's 0 for his last 18. Number eight guy with the pitcher on deck here. Pardon me, number seven with the right fielder, Sapelt, on deck. And Deadweiler stays up and away 2 0. Cubs have lost 13 of their last 14 road games. They're 17 and 48, as FP told you when we signed on. Houston is 13 and 53. Three and 0. There's Dave Sapelt, the right fielder. He's had one at bat at the big league level this season. Deadweiler misses on four in a row. Two on, two out. Well, the Cubs will be here for four in Thursday night. One of those first 15,000 fans receive a messenger bag presented by United Airlines. You must enter through the center field gates to receive it. Go to nationals.com slash tickets and some restrictions apply. Dave Sapel, the former ninth rounder with Cincinnati, came over here with pitcher Travis Wood and infielder Ronald Torres in the Sean Marshall deal December of last year. Hit 266 at AAA Iowa this season. He's been in the big leagues before, 107 at bats with the Reds last year when he hit 243. In the air, he hacks that ball down the line. It slices, and it just misses foul of being a home run or a double off that high wall just to the right of the yellow line. Yeah, that had distance. 95 mile an hour fastball above his letters. Talk about getting on top of some high heat. Watch where this pitch is up in the zone. Tomahawk piece. 
Got inside of it enough to have that inside out rotation where it just tailed foul at the last mm -hmm. second. But that ball was hit. Yeah, just a couple of feet from being his first major league home run. Proud once and out. And they'll get one on a ground ball. Nice hop for Danny Espinosa. Deadwater out of the top of the second. Nats have four, five, and six. LaRoche, Michael Morris, and Ian Desmond straight ahead. It is brought to you by Miller Light. We always show something tall, like a foul pole or a section sign or a first baseman. So here we go, bottom of the second, Adam LaRoche. Ninth inning, Ryan Zimmerman had just reached on an error. And against Jeff Samarja, LaRoche homer to right and knocked Samarja out of that game. It seems like five years ago, the first series of the year on the road at Wrigley Field. That was five months ago. Seems like five years ago. Carlos Marmol came into that game, walked Jason Worth, and then Xavier Nady fouled out to end the game. And the Nats dropped their only game of that series, 4-3. And LaRoche, did he get this one and keep it fair? It's another home run. Number 25 for the first baseman. So how about his last two ABs against Jeff Samarja? You gotta give the truck an assist on that one for showing that highlight from five months ago at Wrigley Field of Adam LaRoche taking Jeff Samarja deep. They willed that to happen. 25th home run of the year for LaRoche. And there goes the no-hitter. Well, our crew got here really early this morning because on the first day of the series they have so much work to do for a new ball club. So Ladies and gentlemen, out in center field around the ballpark, that home runs for you guys. Here's Michael Morse. And check out the location and the pitch. Fastball middle in, belt high, right in LaRoche's turbo zone. Just enough tail to come right back onto the barrel of his bat. Caught it out front. Extension, classic swing we've seen all year. 20th of the year given up by Samarja, by the way. And just for the record, the Nats are 59 and 17 when they score first. <laughs> that matches, by the way, his home run total of two years ago when he drove in 100 runs in Arizona. And Adam now has 85 RBIs here. He scored first on Saturday and ended up losing that game to the Cardinals, but it took a slugfest to do it. That was Fox's fault, not ours. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Michael Morris, eight for his last 21. He a lot of base hits to right field. They've been pitching him that way. He took a big hack for power there, and the count's even 2-2. Braves have a f early run in the first against Colorado. Did you see what Chipper did last night? I did. I think it's time that he goes and spends some more time with his kids. Yeah. 
Walk-off home run against Jonathan Papelbon to beat the Phillies, who blew a big lead in that game. Seven to three with two outs in the ninth, I believe. Michael Moore strikes out. One out here in the second. I mean, we love Chipper Farr, but I think it's time that he goes and spends some valuable time with his children <laughs> right now. <laughs> Ah, the great ones have a way of going out in style. That's no fun. You got to go out hitting 150 like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, but most guys hitting 150 know they're not going to have a <laughs> plaque in upstate New York sometime in the future. He does. Ian Desmond goes the other way, and that ball will reach the seats in the right field corner. Desmond is three for seven career against Samarja. Coming off a two hit game yesterday. Against St. Louis, Ian was six for 16 with two RBIs. And you take it back a game further than that, hitting over 400. What an offensive weekend that was. Nats had 32 runs on 48 hits against a ball club fighting for a playoff spot. Cubs, by the way, didn't get here till after midnight last night. They were only coming from Chicago. Their plane had a mechanical problem. They only had to cross one time zone and what? Maybe an hour 45 minute flight from Chicago to here and it was one o'clock when they hit their hotel. When and a day game. When you're 30 games under your plane always has mechanical problems. It's just the way it goes. Desmond with a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. He's gone two outs. Danny Espinosa will be next. Uh, Danny, six for 14 over his last four games. Six for 15, actually. So he had a three for four yesterday with an RBI. So he was six. For 15 with a homer, two runs, uh, three runs batted in, and a walk in that St. Louis series. Ballpark quiet, everybody just kind of settling in on the holiday here. And there's another base hit for Danny Espinosa. Who now has hits in four of his last five at bats. Just driving the ball beautifully, staying nice and quiet in there. I think the difference in Espinosa, first half, second half, obviously looking to pull more, drive the ball to the pole side. But more often than not, he's finding himself ahead in the count. If you remember the first half, they might as well just put 0-2 on the scoreboard when he walked into the box to save everybody some time. But now, seeing the ball better, making better decisions, consistently getting ahead in the count. How about Kurt Suzuki now working on a six-game hitting streak? Five RBIs over that time. What a great weekend he had. That'll be low from Jeff Samarja, who threw only six pitches, four strikes in the first inning. Now the Nats have him up to 21. And Kurt will take one way outside, 2 0, trying to keep the inning alive. At least get it down to Ross Deadweiler, get the pitcher in the box here in the second. And of course, different players, different time. But the Cubs have been one of those teams that's been able to come into Washington and win games in recent years. They've won 8 of 11 here, going back to the ballpark's second year in 09. I think most of that, if I remember correctly, was the first weekend Jim Riggleman was the manager. They came in here and swept the Nats. And then after that, Riggleman led the Nationals to a pretty good second half. 
so they played him pretty even since then. Cubs were a contending ball club at that point three years ago. And that's a 3-0 pitch that catches the borderline outside corner. Well, Kurt has his batting average up to 246 now. He was on the interstate there for a while. He's had some real nice games handling the pitching staff very well. Espinosa back easily. And Samarja will walk the number eight hitter. Giving the Nats two on, two out. His control numbers this year, 165 strikeouts. That was his 55th walk, so he's right at a three to one strikeout to walk ratio. Well, what he failed to realize is that Ross Detweiler loves the fastball and he likes it away. And he's a good fastball hitter. Ninety four on the corner. Ross is thinking I will definitely take that pitch in the top of the third. That's in there. Oh two on the outside edge. Maybe the outer half. And now Ross if he's trying to collect his third hit of the year maybe his second RBI. Has to be an attack or protect mode here. One or the other. Why not attack? Takes a pretty decent swing. Fouls it. I'm all for attacking. Big fan of attacking. Swing hard in case you hit it. Yeah. Love to attack. That'll be outside. Hey, anything to make this guy on a warm, muggy day throw some more pitches. Samarja, 23 pitches in this inning. Top of the order awaiting to see what happens here. So the two out hit by Espinosa big, then the walk to Suzuki. Samarja having to work long and hard here in the second. He'll strike out Deadwater. He strikes out the side. But. But you take a day off, you rest your sore back, you get back in the lineup, you hit your 25th tater of the year. One nothing Nationals. Bench located on the web at MBUSA.com and by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. Inside Pitch, one of the great magazines around baseball. The Nats put that out regularly. 
Adam LaRoche with his 25th of the year has put Washington on top. How about Steven Strasburg yesterday? Six dominant innings when he gave up hits to only one batter. Matt Holliday had both. Well, you kind of had a feeling it was going to be like this after a rough outing last time out. Gave up seven runs on nine hits in Miami. And then after 24 hits and a bunch of runs the day before, you figured Strasburg would be locked in. His fastball command was good. He worked off of that heater with a great curveball, great change combo. Look at the location, pounding guys in, moving the ball around, keeping the fastball down. The four-seamer and two-seamer were great. 97 pitches, 65 strikes, no runs, two hits, a walk. Nine strikeouts in six dominant innings was in line for the win. Cardinals came back to tie it, and then Matthews got the W in relief. Nats won. That all, that's all that matters to Steven. Jeff Samarja, five out of 46 with three RBIs this year. Takes a big hack. He does have one career home run. Big strong right handed hitter. So at the age of 27 they've taken him out of the bullpen and put him in as a starter. Bull's got some carry to it. Jason Worth will get there. Cradle it with both hands on the full run for the first out. Touchdown Jason Worth. Jeff Samarja has to appreciate that catch. Former Notre Dame wide receiver hits a deep fly ball to right. Jason Worth, maybe a go route right there in the sun. Two hand catch over his shoulder. Six points. I call that a pen pattern. Heading for the bullpen. I like it. By the way, Zach Dukes out there today and Christian Garcia. Nats bringing up two more pitchers today. That ball was hit. Jeff Samarja would have had himself a home run in Wrigley Field. <laughs> there was any wind blowing, he would have. Here's Joe Mather. He goes right field. That's out of play. Christina and I spent a little time at the locker of Zach Duke this morning, and she'll have more on his return to the big leagues. Quality arm who had a really good season at AAA. Was he in his locker or were we just standing by his locker? We stuffed him in his locker. Oh, that's wow. how tough we are. All right. We just picked him up and All put right. him in there. That's good. <laughs> Zach Duke could take each of us with one hand and stuff us in that locker. Good to see him back in the big leagues, though. And a high fly ball, foul ground near the barrier, and no room for Zimmerman to reach in. PNC Minor League Report for the Achiever in You Solutions that help you achieve your financial goals. Pedro Encarnacion for the Auburn Double Days unbeaten over his last seven, five and one, 2008 draft pick. That Class A short season, you can make a good impression on the organization at P. Yeah, he's ready. Call him up. Short season. Got his hacks in. I'd love to see your clubhouse if you were the major league manager in September. Your payroll would be about 85 million yep. for one month with all the guys you have up there. PD's ready. Give him a shot. One ball and two strikes to Joe Mather. Target away. That's a nice pitch. Caught him trying to pull it. Zimmerman cuts it off. Two down. Good pitch to good defense right there. A little chopper over the mound. You see where Zimmerman's playing. He likes to play even with the bag at third base, even if he doesn't feel like a guy's going to bunt, just so he can make that slow roller play. For you kids at home, anytime you're playing third base and you can get to the baseball in front of the shortstop, you're going toward the base. It's a shorter throw, and it's always the third baseman's priority over the shortstop on a slow roller to his left. You can get to it, it's yours. Two outs, base is empty. The hitter, Darwin Barney. Cubs like this young man. Hitting around 260 most of this year, 271. In his first two big league seasons with the Cubs. Fastballs in there, 1 1. Deadwater continues to use the number one very effectively in his last starts. Just moves that thing around and uses it to different quadrants. His quadrants like side of the plate? Yep. Okay. Down and away, down and in, up and away, up and in. Uh, there's one in the middle you want to avoid whenever you can. Well, if you throw 96, 
You can elevate it. You can make some mistakes down the middle. Let's see if maybe he takes that 90 plus and elevates it somewhere. Kind of like that. He gets a foul ball. Barney able to get a piece of it. Nats have won four out of five. And by winning yesterday four to three, it was their 31st win of the year when they've scored four runs or fewer. A real tribute to the pitching staff with Anthony Rizzo on deck here in the third. 89% fastball. That's about right. The last four or five starts. Maybe more from Ross. Weak swing. Ball hits the mound. Espinosa looked like it changed directions on Danny at the last second. And this ball club is playing some kind of defense, and they have been all year. Welcome back to Nationals Park. We're in the bottom of the third inning here, and the Nationals lead the Cubs one to nothing. And as Bob just mentioned, a new face in the clubhouse today, um, Zach Duke, who's a left-handed pitcher that joined the ball club and is very familiar with a lot of faces in this clubhouse after spending some time in Pittsburgh with him a few years ago. He called his call up shocking and overwhelming, but Davey Johnson said it's very important to reward guys when they do well in the minor leagues, sign with us, do well, and you want to call them up when the opportunity presents itself. Another new face. Christian Garcia, a power arm that was added to the club today. It's his first major league call up. He said it was a very emotional call to his parents yesterday. He's been through Tommy John twice. He said it made him a better and stronger guy. He never gave up. He looks at every pitch like it's his last now and appreciates the little things after spending a year and a half out of baseball. And he said, I'm really looking forward to just living out my dreams with the Washington Nationals. And he was absolutely dealing in triple A power guy mm -hmm. fastball 96 to 98 miles an hour and helped that bullpen down there. The other thing he said was not once during the season having a great year. Did he ever let himself think about the major leagues. He just wanted to stay day to day focused on doing what he loves. Which a lot like Jason Worth is these days getting on base. So he leads off the third with a single the Nats have their third hit. And by the way that was Christina with our FCA dot org. The Association for IT Pros sideline report. Stay hot, Larry. Leadoff. Been doing a nice job of getting on base since Davey put him in the leadoff slot. You take a day off, your legs are barking, and they should be barking because he's been on base every time. On base five times the other day. They're doing a great job of starting rallies for the Nationals. Jason Worth, Bryce Harper, top of the order, getting it done. Harper fouled out on. A pitch early in the count first time up after Worth had flight out in the first and now they're getting their second look at Samarja Harper of course first time he was not with the Nats in early April and a strike in the outside corner seemed to surprise him that called at least. That will be outside one ball one strike by the way the Braves got two in the first in that game at home against the Rockies. Who knows that game might be over Chris Medlin's pitching as well as he's been lately. 
They're batting bottom of the second. Nats hoping for some Colorado help today. Chris Medlocks. <laughs> Say he's been something for them. And he doesn't throw that hard. One and two to Harper. Good take two and two. Some news out of Cincinnati. Jay Bruce has hit his 30th. And the Reds lead the Phillies 1 0. Cincinnati one win ahead of the Nats for the most, not only in the National League, but all of baseball. Harper pulls it right side. They'll really have to hurry to turn two and not even a chance for a throw. And Worth was going after Castro just in case. One on, one out. When we talk to the Cubs people, Jeff Samarge is a guy that's a lot like Steven Strasburg in the fact that he hasn't pitched a full season as a starter. He's got a good arm, a power fastball, but as the season has progressed, he's learning how to pitch. You know, that football mentality that he has, when the going got tough, he would try to throw harder. And now he's realizing as the games go on, the more starts he gets, how to finesse guys and throw the change up, the slider, and then the rest of his off speed to get some outs. You see right there, first pitch slider to Zimmerman. And out of the bullpen, you can have that bulldog football approach. Not if you want to last long into ball games. Well, I think the football mentality is good and it's bad. It's good because you can see the guy's a gamer, the kind of guy you want to play behind, but. In tough situations, you talk to veteran pitchers, they'll go soft in big situations and prey on the hitter's aggressiveness. Where maybe a guy with a good fastball and a younger guy will try to throw it by guys. That doesn't always work. Zimmerman flied to center first time. Harper with a moderate lead. 2 and 0. Oh. Jeff Samarge, a 32nd career start, 27th of this year. He's made 123 relief appearances. And that breaking ball will catch the outer half. Nissan will track it. Yeah, slider's been good for Smarja today. You throw it for a strike and a 2 0 count. That's what I'm talking about. Guy learning how to pitch, not just get out there and, and throw. Bonus cash ends tomorrow, so get to your Nissan Summer Saving Days dealer as soon as you can. By the way, the Nats are facing Smarja 8 and 12. Nobody else with a winning record in this series. Harper just back. Chris Rusan 0 and 1 tomorrow. Chris Volstead 2 and 9 Wednesday. Justin Hermano 2 and 5 Thursday. And now Zimmerman works it to 3 and 1. Nothing but a way to Ryan here. Last stolen base for Bryce Harper, July 23rd hmm. at New York. That's interesting. Zimmerman lines one hard to short and Harper does get back. So Zimmerman unlucky there Adam LaRoche got one he could turn on last time. See I see what you guys in the truck are doing you showed his home run on April 8th against Jeff Samarja and then he walked up his first time and hit a home run so you're going to show his home run the first time hoping that he hits another one his second time nice work. I like it. Well if he does Lexus will have to cough up two hundred dollars more and they'll be happy to do it to the Children's National Medical Center. They do that every time and that hits a homer this year. That's one hundred and forty five home runs. Cubs have given up one hundred and forty one. So he'll work him away and get a strike. 
Nationals over the weekend just went over 100 in terms of home runs given up. Fewest in baseball at 102. I just think that first swing by LaRoche is a direct result of having a day off. You talk about these veteran guys that have been grinding it out to get to this point in the season. You know, something as little as a day off helps you physically, it helps you mentally. You just don't have to check in mentally and you know, hey, I'm just going to sit here and watch a big league game today. Well, Harper back on a snap throw. Plus, it gives you some time to heal. Schedule is interesting in September because there are a number of days off, but none until after the series at New York on the 13th. Another one on the 17th. And Samarja pulling the string there with 85 on the off speed. That's going to hit from work. They've stranded three, but lead by a run. He could be on your mantle by Saturday night. It's his bobblehead day. 1.05 p.m. Saturday against the Marlins for the first 15,000 fans presented by PNC Bank. You must enter through the center field gates to receive that promotional item. Go to nationals.com slash tickets and some restrictions apply. Well, if it's anything like Michael Morse's, doesn't it have to be an underhand throw from third base? On the run. On the run. I mean, bobbleheads can't run, but it's got to look like he's running, right? Yeah. Although, if the bobblehead could run, I'd want one and be a little scared. Rizzo drives it to left. One way, then the other. Michael Morris, and he grabs it at the last second. Ball tailing right back over the top of his ball cap, and he made a fine finish. When a left hander hits you a ball in left field, it'll have that tail back toward the foul line. And I think Michael Morris didn't have a whole lot of time to figure this line drive out because it was hit hard. Right on the nose. You see the inside out swing the tail. Morse broke over his left shoulder and the ball tailed back. I mean, if he's at six foot five, he doesn't catch that. Here's Alfonso Soriano who made a quick out on a bouncer to Zimmerman first time. The former net hitting at 258. 25 homers, 85 RBI, seventh in the league, and runs batted in. That's a great pitch on the inside corner. I think that's the book on Soriano. Pound him in with that fastball. He's a guy that likes to get us extended. 25 home runs will prove that, so you got to keep the ball close. 
turns on that one. He can turn on the ball as quick as anybody in baseball. Way foul. Angility. Your mission, our commitment. Visit AngelityCorp.com. So 25 plus homers the most season since 02. Soriano right behind Albert Pujols and another former Nat, Adam Dunn. Up and away, can't reach that fastball. Soriano strikes out for the 124th time. Two outs, and that's six in a row for Detweiler, seven of the last eight. He had two strike elevator fastball, climbing the ladder, 94 miles an hour. So after a long fly ball and a fastball in, Detweiler goes up and away to get Soriano. Gotta bring in Starlin Castro, who doubled with one out, went opposite field last time. That was a ball. Beyond the reach of Jason Worth, and he has the only hit. High chopper Zimmerman, quick exchange, and he bounces the throw. It goes into the seats. And they'll have to give Ryan an error, even if the batted ball is ruled a hit. Castro has great speed. So Ryan will have his 13th error of the year. Will they give a hit on the front end? We'll see. Well, if they feel like Starlin Castro would have beat this out because of the high chop, it'll be a hit and an error. And you see the sinker to LaRoche, and it hit the lip. That's a ball that Adam LaRoche would have had, but watch where it hits. I'm pretty sure it hits the grass right where it meets the dirt. And look at the nasty hop. No shot wow. at picking that. If the ball stays down, LaRoche has that. We've seen him do it all season long, but because of the nasty hop on the lip, there's nobody that could have picked that. And they have given a base hit on that. And then the error gets the batter to second base. In fact, somebody at the scoreboard feeling really generous. They gave him two hits on that. He gave him a run, too. That was a <laughs> costly error by Zell. Wow. Zell. Come on. Make the guy cover four bags. That pitch is upstairs. So. Check out where the grass meets the dirt and watch the hop. So there's a little lip there. Ball hits that grass right there mm. and hops up. And I don't know if it hit the grass. It might have hit the dirt, but either way, it was a horrible hop. Yeah, you get a close Adam LaRoche will pick it. Wellington cast steal the catcher, struck out first time. And a walk to on two out. Second walk by Detweiler. Josh Vitters, the hitter. He walked first time. <laughs> Some fans below us getting pretty upset about the scoreboard right now. Are you in the press box? Fix the score. I do. I do know that all, a lot of that's computerized over there and. Sometimes when a mistake has been made, it takes a minute to get that thing reset. And they will be working to do that. Or they already are. Josh Vitters walked on four pitches in the number seven spot. Back in the second. And that is a strike. And he goes upstairs with a hack. It's off to the right. And the count, no balls and two strikes. Ted Wilder trying to put a fourth consecutive zero on the board. Ross through the first three innings, averaging right around 12 pitches per inning. And Vitter's going to chase that high fastball with one strike. Maybe you do it now here with two again. A little bit higher. Target is in. Jammed him just enough. Ninety percent heater so far from Ross. I think Kurt Suzuki's going to go out there and say, "Hey, do you want to switch the signs up? And what do you feel comfortable with here in an 0-2 count? Do you want to go right back to that high fastball, or do you want to go somewhere else to set it up in a 1-2 count?" 
But if he's swinging at that pitch the last two times, try to elevate one even higher. See if he'll chase. There they are. That's a good dude. That's really nice. That's a good look. I love it. Fly ball. Short left center. Harper on the call. <laughs> and two more stranded by the Cubs. They've left four. Deadwater puts four zeros on the board. He was the savior of last week. Nats were in trouble after that blowout loss at Miami. He comes up big on Wednesday night and then it flows right on into the weekend. So that's pretty good from the back end of your rotation. If Ross, if Stalin Castro had missed the bus to the game today, Ross Detweiler would have a no hitter going, giving up a couple of hits to Castro, but maybe doing a nice job of moving the fastball around. Pound him the strike zone as we just showed 90% heaters from Ross Detweiler. Roger Bernardini is hitting for Michael Morse here. And he goes up first pitch swinging bottom of the fourth and pops it up. Don't know if Morse maybe twisted something on that twisting catch in left field. We'll find out. Michael Morse out of the ball game. So Bernardina for Morris in the number five spot. Ian Desmond coming on now. Well, I know that that wrist has been bothering Michael Morse since he got hit by that pitch in Miami. We were talking about it the other day. Hasn't gone away. It's still been nagging him. Of course, the Nats have a 300 hitter they can call on, and Roger Bernardino, when somebody needs a break like Worth did yesterday, Morse today. In Desmond struck out swinging first time. Samarja kept pounding him with breaking balls away. He might be thinking two on this, but Soriano gets to it quickly. Great swing by Ian Desmond, whose hitting has not suffered. He has base hits in three of his last four at bats. If that hand is 100%, this is a double. You see, he got something up from Samarja. Looks like a slider that just stayed out over the plate. And drills this into the gap. And we've been talking about Ian Desmond's playing smart. A lot of times, a guy that plays as hard as he does, it's hard to gear down when you have a little tweak of your hamstring. He's been doing a nice job of playing some intelligent baseball and not taking chances. One on one out, Danny Espinosa has been hot. He now has hits in seven of his last 16 at bats. Yeah. 
So the Nats have out hit the Cubs 4 2. That ball got in on Danny's hands. He fouls it back and out of play. Espinosa 254, 15, and 49. If he has a big September, there's no reason why he can't get to 270 and 20. Mm -hmm. When you talk about where he came from and the struggles he had early, that is an incredible salvage of a season. He probably doesn't care about the numbers, just wants to get to the postseason. But for a guy that struggled in April and May to get to where he's at right now, tells you about the person more than the player. 21 homers and 66 RBIs last year. And a 1-1, tried to wait for it, fouls it. Off comes the helmet. Now the reason he's been hitting so well, he's been keeping his head down. On contact, head down, foul ball. And thank goodness that got his helmet and not his eye. Seeing a lot of guys do some damage on foul balls like this that come up and get him right in the face. Two pitch nearly hit him, and they've got Desmond at first. Two three on the catcher's pickoff, Wellington Castillo. Well, it was a good pitch to do it on, right? Into Espinosa, kind of taking Castillo that way. Good snap throw to first, Rizzo with the tag. If he tagged him, he's yeah, out. If he tagged him, you're right. Now Espinosa will drive one to center. That ball will fall in front of Joe Mather. Second hit of the inning for the Nats and Danny Espinosa, two for two. He is amazing right now. I mean, you're, you're looking at a guy that was. His 16 for his first 78 in April. That's a 205 average. 22 for his next 95 in May at 232. So 17, 38 for his first 173. And now he's battling to get to 270, 280 land. You talk about turning his season around. That is not easy. Danny Espinosa hitting 255 with his two for two today. Suzuki skies one on a play right side. Man down. Did you see that? Guy in the white right there. Good effort, but he did an ST plunge right on the stairs. We're going to have to shut him down after two more games. I mean, it's a good effort. Check him out. Whoa! Sayonara. Those steps, they just get in the way all the time. You can't backpedal upstairs. I think there's a sniper somewhere here in the stadium. And Suzuki will fly out to Joe Mather in center. So the Nats had a couple of base runners, lost one on a pickoff. Hitting the ball pretty well today, but still one nothing.
Use Cox High Speed Internet at Cox.com. Starlin Castro, the only Cub generating any offense. Adam LaRoche, the only Nat with an RBI. Ross Detwater, very effective. 52 pitches in four innings, 36 strikes. So with one run and seven hits in the game, let's show some D. Jason Worth going a long way for this one. The over-the-shoulder catch on a bolt by Jeff Samarja. Seen this play a gazillion times this year. Zimmerman on the run. And Danny Espinosa is solid defensively as any second baseman in baseball. And how about the beast? Opened up to the wrong side, made a nice correction. A reach and a grab. And we'll let you know as soon as we know on the condition of Michael Morse, who's out of this game. I just think that wrist has been barking. He struck out his first time up. And when you have a bad wrist, the swing and miss hurts more than putting the ball in the play. Mm. Dave Sapel bounced out to Espinosa first time up. So Ross Deadweiler right at 13 pitches per inning, a great average to have. Getting into the middle of a ball game. He goes off speed that time, 78. Had the hitter way out in front. Braves have added two more. Bottom of the third, and they lead the Rockies 4 0. Now they've added two more on top of that and lead 6 0 in the third inning. Just keep taking care of your business, and it doesn't matter. The Nats, since coming home Thursday, have gained a game and a half on Atlanta. Here comes the strikeout clap. And a 1 2 pitch, it's outside, counts even. Jeff Samarja, he's the one who hit that fly ball that Worth made a good catch on. Deadwater goes off speed, misses 3 2. Tracking the Braves and the Nats atop the East. Home games, Nationals have four more than the Braves. Three uh, fewer against the East. And the Nats have more winning teams ahead than the Braves do. Russ Dedwater threw some off speed pitches to the number eight hitter in that AB. Missed with the fastball on three and two. And that will be his third walk of the day. That'll give the pitcher a chance to bump the tying run. Samarja, five sacrifice bunts this year. So Zimmerman will pinch in from third. LaRoche will be ready to charge. And Samarja squaring early. Deadens the ball, but he's way late for it. Strike one. That is a big man, 6'5, 225. He was a wide receiver in college. And Mike Stan or John Carlos Stanton, excuse me, was a wide receiver in high school. Both 6'5. Samarja so actually went back for another semester at Notre Dame of football following his minor league season in 06 with a couple of levels of A ball for the Cubs. And he pulls off that fastball away. One ball, one strike. And he swings away and hacks it hard and foul. Cubs taking a shot for one pitch. It's something big. I mean, if you're just turning this game on right now and you don't know that that's the pitcher, <laughs> you'd think that's a position player with that swing. 
He'd have to be a first baseman, I believe. That's solid. Play some left field, probably. Ball hawk. One ball and two strikes. Back to the bunt. Here comes Zimmerman. And he bunts it fair. Laid the bat down. Suzuki had to jump by the bat to make that play 2-4. So Samarja comes up big on a two-strike count. I mean, there's an obstacle course right there for Kurt Suzuki. He had to get out of the way of Samarja. Jump over a bat. To a barrel roll over some water. And then make the play. Watch this. Okay, there's one. There's two. Watch out, LaRoche. There's three. Perfect throw. A lot going on in that simple sacrifice bunt. You know, that was interesting. It looked to me like there was some contact made while Samarja was running in fair territory. It takes runners a while to cross that line to get over into the runner's box. So a lot of things going on on what often is a simple play, but not that time. Here's Joe Mather who has struck out looking and bounced out to Zimmerman. He has 17 RBIs in 85 games. Darwin Barney is next. He has 38 RBIs. And a great block by Suzuki with the runner held up by the hitter. Off walk to the number eight hitter, really changing this inning. So Pelt has very good speed. And that ball lifted out to left center. Roger Bernardino right there. So Pelt back to tag. Bernardino launches one on target just a little late. Runner to third, two outs. With no outs, getting to third base with one out, good play. And if you're Ross Detweiler right now, you're just worried about Darwin Barney. You know, the fact that he got to third, good base running by Sapelt, good throw by Bernardina. But with two outs, not that big a play. Other than Kurt Suzuki has to block anything in the dirt now. And our old friend, former Nats coach, Pat Listash, coaching over at third for the Cubs. Good baseball man. He's right next to Sapelt. Here's Patty, who really was an outstanding member of this staff for a couple of years. Darwin Barney, and there's another really good block by Suzuki. I thought Devil had a little trip there in the delivery. That pitch only 89 miles an hour. Something happened on landing to where he didn't have his footing, threw it straight in the dirt. Good block. By Suzuki textbook on that Exmo. And a swing and a foul, one ball, one strike. A Labor Day souvenir. Take that to school tomorrow. Target is in. Ross really missing his spot. Kurt Suzuki's been all over the place, blocking and catching balls this inning. He saved a run on two pitches so far. One in the dirt, one over his head. Looking for a fastball low down and in. Good save. This ball tapped in the air. Short right field. And then Jason Worth called everybody off and took charge. Deadweiler has only given up two hits in five shutout innings.
Well, bottom of the fifth inning. It's a well pitched, well played. Good fundamental ball game here so far. One swing is the difference. Adam LaRoche with that home run. Back in the second. Can we say the same fundamentally about Teddy Roosevelt? Starting out third. They got their blue holiday unis on today, but it looks like George wants this one badly. You got a holiday in George Washington? There's your wind horse right there. Not the most creative one we've seen all year, but fun nonetheless. Bottom of the fifth, Ross Deadweiler. Fun nonetheless. I'm telling you, they were all dancing out there the other day. They had a little routine going in straightaway center field. That was great. Yeah. Crowd was going nuts on their feet. I think they need to dance more and be the dancing presidents. I'm sure Teddy wouldn't mind that. He'd have a shot. Look at it. Ed Weiler hitting a hard line drive into the seats. Everybody appears to be okay. He did a nice job of mixing things up. 56% fastball. He's averaging 14 to pitches per inning, not many more than Ross. That'll ring up Deadweiler on the inside corner. Strikeout number five. Well, the Nets are hoping to be in the playoffs, and you would hope to be at the ballpark. A way to accomplish that is to put down a deposit on a full season ticket plan for next year. And you'll receive postseason ticket purchase priority right here. Go to nationals.com slash 2013-202-675 Nets. One for two is Jason Worth today. This ball will be out of play quickly. O2. I mean, you're talking about a guy that throws 96 miles an hour that's done a nice job of dropping sliders in when he's behind in the count, dropping first pitch off speed in to get ahead in the count. So we saw this guy on April 8th in Chicago to where he was a power guy. Now, five months later, much more refined, doing a great job of mixing things up today here. Playing on a fifth place ball club. He's won just seven of 19 decisions since then. Yeah, right just over 4.03. I mean, this is a core guy that you can build a staff around from what I'm seeing. Worth reaching out deep short. Starlin Castro with a backhand and he guns out Worth. Worth pulled up a couple steps early. He did. That was not Jason Worth at full speed approaching the bag. Two outs. It's so hard. When you have a nagging injury, not to go 100% when you smell a base hit. Jason Worth turning on the Jets about three or four steps before the base. We'll take a look at him right here. Pulls up. Right now he's smelling knock. And right there he felt something. So we'll keep an eye on him. Michael Morse already out of this game. You hope that Jason Worth is okay. Samarja has retired Harper twice. Foul out to third. And a bouncing ball to second. That is off the plate inside, 1 1. Nets have five base hits, the Cubs just two. And Harper will pull this one right to Anthony Rizzo approaching the bag. Rizzo leads off top of the sixth. It is a one nothing pitching duel right now.
Who but? Who but W.B. Mason? So this one on to the sixth inning. Jason Worth out of the dugout. Moments ago on his way back to right field. Evidently okay. Well, I don't know about okay, but good enough to play. You see him grab his hamstring right there. There's a little hitch of the giddy up as he starts to run out there. Hey, when you miss 75 games with a broken wrist, you don't want to come out of any after that. Anthony Rizzo has bounced to Desmond. Lined out on that great play by Michael Morrison left. And he goes up first pitch hacking here in the sixth. That is good jamage for strike two. I was wondering where you're going with that. Serious, severe, good. Well, severe, you have to get an out. How about good? Yeah. Is that even on the meter? Serious and severe are pretty equal, but severe means an out. No balls and two strikes. And then he tries to paint away. Up the middle. To his right, Espinosa plants and fires. And when he gets a chance to plant that right foot, it is usually it for a base runner. One out. Well, that's the easy play. The throwing part, the easy part of the play, I should say. He got an in-between hop to the backhand side and did a nice job of getting this in the glove. Watch that in-between hop right there. I mean, on the run, your head's moving. You just kind of stab at that baseball, hope it goes in your glove. Once you make that part of the play, when you got an arm like Danny Espinosa, the rest is cake. Good play going up the middle. And how about the range he showed in this homestand? Behind first, behind second, doesn't matter. The guy's everywhere. Fantastic play in the ninth inning yesterday on Skip Schumacher when he went way to his left. That kept the tying run off base. And the 0-1 to Soriano is under his hands inside 1-1. When you're going a long way for a ball as an infielder on the ground, you don't have the luxury of getting the hop you want. You have to let the ball play you, and you're just lucky enough to get there. And on that play, Espinosa went a long way and had a tough in between hop. And Alfonso Soriano checks in with a base hit. Second career hit in seven at bats against Ross Detweiler. So that hit by Soriano and two by the man coming up. Starlin Castro. That is it for the Cubs offense today, other than three walks. Detweilers pitched around all three of them. Opposite field double. High chopper on the infield, two for two. Soriano, five stolen bases on the year, has been caught twice. Yeah, he's had some knee and leg problems in recent years. Running game nowhere near what it used to be. I think that uh, Michael Morse thing with the right thumb, we're just told now, the reason he's out of the game, that started with that batting practice swing he took in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago. He was telling us how much that thing was bugging him, and then he got hit on the hand after that. And then while they're doing a nice job of paying attention to Soriano, just enough. There's a guy with only five stolen bases. But in a one run game in the sixth inning, he's looking like he has some interest in running. Well, 0 2 can be a running pitch if there's some off speed in the dirt coming. Deadweller's going to throw a fastball, though, upstairs, 94. And it would have to be a guess and go if he's going to steal because Deadweller's just too quick to the plate.
And a 2-2. It's a breaking ball low and inside. Well, you're going to have some action on this pitch, I believe. You're betting on Castro putting the ball in play. You got decent wheels at first base in Soriano. 3-2 count. One nothing game. I think you have to start him. Soriano holds and it's a double play ball. So he had no chance to go after the second baseman there. And the Nats are out of the inning with their 108th twin killing of the year. And some big ground ball outs there. Play ball, three, four, five coming up in a one nothing game. College basketball returns to the DMV District, Maryland, Virginia area. Coach John Thompson the third leads your Georgetown Hoyas. Get some of the nation's best at Verizon Center. Be a part of the tradition that is Georgetown. Grab hold of some tickets. Visit wearegeorgetown.com or call 202-687-4692. That's 202-687 Hoya together. We are Georgetown. Here's Virginia's Zimmerman, and it's in there for a strike, bottom of the sixth underway. Ryan drives it right field and tailing out of play. Discover Kia's full lineup of high quality, stylish, and dependable vehicles. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Since the first of July, Jeff Samarja among the toughest pitchers to hit in the National League. It goes back to what we were talking about last inning, mixing it up nice, learning how to pitch, and doing a great job. So surround this guy with a little better supporting cast. You might see somebody about to break through next year. One out away from a complete game against the Nats back on the first Sunday of the season on a cool day in Chicago. Then he gets Zimmerman on a breaking ball 0 2 and for Samarja strikeout number six. Nissan will track it. it. Might have been the split at 86 miles an hour. You check out the straight down action. Yep. That's his out pitch. He throws it with two strikes. Pretty good run right there to Ryan Zimmerman. You see the grip right there. Great shot, guys. Kind of squirting out. And all of a sudden, last second, looks like a fastball. You go to swing and it's not there. That's a hard split, too, at 86. And LaRoche takes one outside corner. He's been seeing a uh, soft stuff away since his home run. There's that split again.
Adam two homers three career RBIs against Samarja. Cubs don't play much of a shift on Adam. And that take will even the count 2 2. You hit a home run on a fastball middle in, first time up. Probably won't see it the rest of the day. Unless it's in a two strike count, he tries to sneak one by you. But as a hitter, you pretty much eliminate that pitch first time up. Nats have had. Just two hits since the third inning. Those came back to back in the fourth. Desmond, who was picked off, then Espinosa. Face runners uh, desired anywhere you can get them. And LaRoche will hack one to right, but something like it hit him down by the trademark, maybe. No carry to it. Sapel, easy play, two outs. And 3 2 split, 86. I was wondering if he was going to challenge him in a 3 2 count, but he went to the split and he got a real good feel for that pitch right now. Cubs 13 of their last 14 dropped on the road and their 262 win percentage on the road the worst in a long long time Houston the only team worse at 13 and 53 that is 40 games under away from home but of course the dynamic of the National League Central trains uh, changes dramatically after next year with Houston departing. Good luck in the American League West. Maybe the Cubbies aren't used to sleeping in with all the day games at Wrigley Field. They get <laughs> on the road, they sleep in until about 2 o'clock and yeah. never really wake up. <laughs> 2 0 slider for a strike. Bernardino on a pitch inside fights it off. The Nats box score showing five base hits. LaRoche the first one leading off the second with a homer. Espinosa's two for two. Desmond has a base hit. And Jason Worth has checked in. So Another long count. Went three two split to LaRoche. Let's see where he goes here to the shark. Pretty much identical, but he got it up a little bit. And Bernardina just rides it up the middle. And now we'll see if the Nats turn Roger loose with two outs. Difference between one nothing and two nothing in a game like this, dramatic. There's a shark. We haven't seen him on base in a while. Nice piece of hit. And come off the bench, get into a big league game. Have a great A-B, get it to a 3-2 count. Staying on that split nice. And watch the extension, just throwing it back up the middle. Nice piece of hitting. And sometime early in the count, it has to be off to the races, you'd think. Well, with Desmond, it's not likely to go that deep. Bernardino, 14 for 17. And he'll draw a throw, not some are just best move. By the way, Castillo behind the plate, and catchers aren't responsible for all of this, but he's 5 for 25. Bernardino holding and that's up and away. <laughs> holding again. Desmond pulls off that breaking pitch. And that's the margin at 1.2 to the plate. That means if Wellington Castillo, let's just say he's a 2-0 to second, that's 3.2 seconds that Roger Bernardina has to steal second. And that's flying. He's usually about a 3-3 from the time he leaves till the time he hits the base at second. Lengthen that lead out a little bit, and Samarja checks him again.
And some Marge of quick feet. Pretty good move to keep you honest over there. He starts and stops. And then Desmond takes it outside, two and one. And the reason as a base runner you start and stop is because you feel like you didn't get your best jump. If you have the green light, you're on your own. I mean, you just have a feel. You take a couple steps and you're like, I'm going to get thrown out here. So you hit the brakes, try to pick a better pitch. He's going this time. Desmond singles up the middle. Bernadina motors over to third base. And the Nats have a corner situation for one of their hottest hitters now. Danny Espinosa coming up. Another two hit day for Ian Desmond. We're doing a nice job lately of using the middle of the field. Ian Desmond with a big hit up the middle yesterday, staying inside of that ball. Bernadina with a good jump. I thought he had this base stolen. And if Joe Mather doesn't get this ball in, he held it for a second. Would have given Bernadina a chance to keep rolling around third base and maybe score. So the five, six, and seven hitters, Bernadina, Desmond, and Espinosa have five hits today. And here comes Danny looking for three in a row. And maybe RBI number 50. He'll take. Nice stop. Castillo sliding to his right. Catcher's mitt in an awkward position when he grabbed it. Now Castillo do a backhand right here. Glove saving the beauty. Target is the outer half. That ball was breaking in and Danny fouled it. Michael Bowden, they have 10 relievers here in September. Eight of them are right handers. Craig Stammen just popping up for the Nats. They have seven bench guys today, too, all left handed. Pass ball by Espinosa. Did Samarja think that was strike three? He took a couple of steps toward third base. Yeah. He thought he'd struck Danny Espinosa out. It was strike two. Espinosa, five high fastball, no chance. The Nats strand a couple. They've left six today. And this pitcher's duel now into the seventh.
Marge at 93. They both pitched this ball game into the seventh inning doing outstanding work. And Dirks Bentley is on the way. A reminder, September 22nd at 105 against the Brewers. Tickets start at just $10. Go to nationals.com slash concerts to check it out. You must have a game ticket to enjoy the outstanding performance by Dirks Bentley when that game is over. Six, seven, and eight for the Cubs. Wellington Castillo, Josh Vitters, and Dave Sapel against Ross Detweiler, who has stopped them on three hits. And pitch number 84 from Ross. 55 strikes, 29 balls. Due to bat second in the seventh. That ball out into center. Well hit. Castillo on for the second time today. Russ Detweiler last time out at Miami in those five and two thirds. When he pitched really well, did throw 95 pitches in that time. So his pitch count much better today. He went 100 at Atlanta back in May. That's. Put him out the, the two highest of the year. Well, there's your look at Christian Garcia throwing in the bullpen. That is off. To the right side, and Adam LaRoche is camped under it. Good quick out to get with the number eight hitter coming up. And then it appears, well, Samarja is walking to the on deck circle, but that could change. Well, they don't have anybody up in their bullpen. This is all Samarja. Yeah, unless they get somebody who can warm up really, really quickly. And as you mentioned, no right handed bats on their bench. They might be as well off with him hacking. Uh, maybe Bowden's loose already. Dave Sapelto for one with a walk. That one easily out of play down the right field side. Nats at home this year looking for their 40th win of the year. They have been dominant against the Central 22 and 9. And against the best two teams in that division, they are eight and three against Cincinnati and St. Louis. Work in the corner. Yeah, 1 1 curveball, backdoor variety. Brings it back, good frame by Suzuki. Gets the strike. That's a good seed to plant the hitter's mind. Throw another one out there. He might try to roll it over to somebody. Nats got out of the six with a double play. And he threw it out there that was just bumped off to the right side. The interesting thing about Deadweiler, if he could get a W today, he would have as many wins as Jordan Zimmerman and one more than Edwin Jackson. That's how well he has pitched. 332 ERA coming in. That's a guy that wasn't in the rotation for a bit.
And with Jordan watching, Dudweiler back to work with one out here in the seventh. And throw over, I think. There's a bouncer, left side, Zimmerman, what a pick. Espinosa with the turn. The Nats with another double play ball to get this one into the seventh inning stretch. And Vitters went to get Espinosa and he dove out of the way at the last second. What a turn. Look at the magic of Zimmerman's glove and then the turn by the middle infielder. Go to Dodge.com or visit your local Dodge dealer this week. And by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. So from the team store out to the diamond, good day for the Nats so far. And at the seventh inning stretch, they lead it one nothing with a couple of double play balls now in the last couple of innings. Chris Rousen lost his major league debut at Milwaukee. He'll go against the Nats tomorrow. Edwin Jackson coming off one of his great outings of the year. Eight innings of shutout baseball on 10 strikeouts against St. Louis. 6.30 Nats extra tomorrow night. First pitch at 7.05. That'll be game two and plenty of baseball yet to be played in this one. Nats have Suzuki, Detweiler, and Worth scheduled here. Yeah, Deadweiler did a nice job against the Pelt to get the ball on the ground, but watch the in-between hop to Ryan Zimmerman. The feed right on the money. Vitter's going in hard, and Espinosa avoiding contact. I mean, that's a pretty double play, as you'll see all year. In traffic, Espinosa with a great turn, getting airborne. You see the in-between hop? That's not easy. Good feed. You see Castillo going hard. Excuse me. The second base, that's a good tough slide, and watch Espinosa avoid contact right here. Clear yourself, get airborne. Hard throw right on the money. 5-4-3, thanks for coming. Looks like the Nats will bat for Ross Deadweiler here at the bottom of the seventh inning. 93 pitches, 62 strikes, seven shutout innings on just four hits. The three walks didn't hurt him. He pitched around all of those. Ross struck out the first batter he faced today. And then only two more the rest of the day. So you'll take those three with two double plays. Chad Tracy about to hit for him. And 12 ground ball outs. Counting the double plays. Yeah, nice job getting his team into the eighth inning with the lead. And it looks like the eighth is going to be Drew Storms. Kurt Suzuki is 0 for 1 with a fly ball to center. Probably Samarja's last inning. He's due to lead off in the eighth. And that breaking ball misses away. 
you know, however this game ends up, I guarantee you, you hear Nationals hitters in the clubhouse after the game giving Jeff Samarja props. This is a well of pitch game as I've seen from an opponent in a long time. Always has that fastball ready to throw by somebody if he needs it. Suzuki with a walk. Six game hitting streak on the line today. And this ball launched out to center. It'll chase Mather to the wall and it'll be caught right in front of that wall at about the 390 mark. Kurt Suzuki probably hit that ball further than he hit his home run yesterday. A good play by Mather. Total disregard for his body and the wall that's about to he's about to run into. And Suzuki got a mistake right there in the inner half. He's been working with Eckstein, shortening his swing, pulling the ball more. Gave this one a ride, but a good play by Mather, the utility player, to pick up Samarja, and he likes it. Well, the pinch hitter extraordinaire, Chad Tracy, in there. Nine for 31 with a homer, 10 RBIs. As a pinch hitter, Tracy checks in, batting 286 overall. And he spits on a couple of pitches away, 2 and 0. Michael Bowden now joined by Jeff Bellavo. Duo here. That's inside. You know, Chad Tracy's job the rest of the season might be just to get to first base. Because if he did does with Perez on the bench, yeah. you're gonna pinch run for him, especially in a close game when the Nats are behind. I mean, he's got a caddy to run for him every time he gets on now the rest of the way. Hitting 290 is a pinch hitter. That's a 3-0 pitch in there. Yeah, I would imagine number 55 already has a helmet on and he's stretched. I see him at the yeah. tail end of the dugout. That'll be strike two. Chad Tracy had a two run single at Wrigley Field against the Cubs on April 7th. He had a double against him the day before. And he gets a chance to level off and foul that one away on a pitch that was tailing outside. Braves still winning handily, top of the seventh at Atlanta. The Rockies are batting against Chris Medlin, who's only given up four hits. And the Braves lead at six nothing. Nats trying to win to stay six and a half ahead. And Tracy will lift one to center for Joe Madden. Then it'll be up to Jason Worth with two outs to get somebody on base here. When you're out of the D.C., Virginia, Maryland market, take the Nats with you everywhere you go. Every remaining game online on your favorite device in HD quality, MLB.TV. New low pricing here at the end of the season. For more details and to order, visit Nationals.com. Jason Worth one for three with a base hit. Reaching for that breaking pitch. Then he got a fastball. 96 here in the seventh inning. He's received two or fewer runs of support 
in nine of his last 10 starts. So there you go. That's why this guy's eight and 12. Instead of 12 and 8, maybe 13 and 7, something like that. And he's been tough. Pass ball up and away. The count's even 2 2. No run support today. The Nats on top by a run. And a swing and a miss. Catcher came up wiggling his hand as if the ball hit it. Worth is gone. Mr. Jefferson's memorial looking beautiful on Labor Day. More people choose Cox high speed internet at Cox.com. Check it out this week. So, Danny Espinosa, a couple of hits. He's got a nice hitting streak going on. Adam LaRoche goes deep, the only run of the game. Ross Deadweiler and Jeff Samarja hooking up beautifully in this one. Yeah, Ross Deadweiler throwing almost all fastballs today. So he starts with a changeup grip, then switches it to fastball. Well placed away to right handed hitters. Had a good curveball because it starts out slow, then goes real fast, so that's hard to hit, of course. <laughs> and then the elevator fastball to Soriano, and when he needs a double play, he can roll it up. Got the defense behind him. And we always talk about it. You're working fast, you're pounding the zone. Defense is into it, concentration level high. Another good outing from Ross Detweiler. This call to the bullpen, packaged by the UPS store. We love logistics. Drew Storen struck out Matt Holiday on Saturday to end one inning. Then he struggled in the following inning. And when he took that loss, it ended a six consecutive scoreless appearance streak. But he's only been scored upon in three of his 21 games this year. Yeah, two seam fastball, four seam fastball, mid to upper 90s. Good slider to go with it, an occasional changeup. And I think you're going to be seeing a lot of Drew Storm in the eighth inning. Sean Burnett's elbow barking. They're going to give him a few days to rest. So you're looking at your eighth inning guy for a while, I would imagine. At least a couple days. David De Jesus has a pinch hitter. Two for seven, a homer, six RBIs. And first pitch in there. De Jesus 240 with Oakland last year eight years before that with Kansas City 284 career hitter Jeff Samarja unrewarded unless they get him off the hook here one run seven hits in seven innings one walk he struck out eight and we talked about it seven extras on the bench for the Cubs today all left handed and you would think here they come. Yeah, there's a bunch of lefties in there somewhere. <laughs> and Jackson's on deck. It looks like Dale Swain's going to start firing some bullets here in the eighth. He's got a bunch of them. Brett Jackson, young outfielder, they're very high on.
Storm gets a fly ball. It's hit deep to center. Harper is back. He's got it. One jump in front of the wall. That'll get your heart beating. Everybody talks about Bryce Harper's offense. You're looking at a guy that hasn't played the outfield very long. I mean, he keeps making highlight reel catch after highlight reel catch, whether it's a line drive, deep fly ball running into the fence. And that's not even talking about his outfield assist and how accurate he is with his arm. And that's a guy that caught the majority of his life playing center field like he's done it for years. Left-handed hitter Brett Jackson. First pinch hitting appearance of the year of his career. He's a rookie goes up hacking 24 year old out of Berkeley, California. He hit 256 at Triple A Iowa this year. A former number one draft pick. 31st player overall taken just three years ago. He's got power and speed. And they think this young man will be a keeper. Rolls it over, and that's hope it's fair, but it's not. You know, Kirk, everybody talks about the starting rotation for the Nationals, the bullpen for the Nationals, and now getting the lineup all together. But I've been around baseball a long time, and I can't remember seeing a team that is this consistent on a daily basis on defense. Whether it's outfield defense hitting the cutoff man, making great plays, whether it's infield defense making the routine play or the spectacular play. You know, when I think about this ball club, the first thing that comes to my mind is how Trump tight they've been on defense all season long. That's how you go 25 and 18 in one run games. Especially low scoring ones like this. Yeah, been on some good teams. I've never seen a team pick it like the 2012 Nats. Never. Only Atlanta. Fewer errors this year, but I think the Nats beat them hands down in range getting the balls all over the field. And the 0-2 to Jackson with the target inside. And now Jeff Beliveau throwing alone. That could be for Harper and LaRoche in the bottom of the eighth with Zimmerman in between. Got him on a side door breaking ball. Drew Storen, two outs. Side door, back door. A door that wasn't the front door for sure. Drew Storen with a nice slider for strike three. 85 miles an hour, brought it back. And the more you watch Kurt Suzuki, you, the more you like the way he frames pitches. Very subtle turns of the glove to buy strike calls. $37 more for the National Institutes of Health and the Children's Inn at NIH, thanks to our Washington area Toyota dealers on every strikeout. A ball lifted to left by Darwin Barney. Bernadina is there. Drew Story with a 1 2 3 8. You're not going to hear boos. You're going to hear Drew's as he comes off the field.
to you, Kurt Suzuki, framing that strike three one more time. It's something subtle, but watch how he reaches out to catch that pitch and stick the landing. Now, if you don't reach out for that and you don't catch it right there, a lot of catchers will take that out of the zone like that and not get the call. But watch him get out there and in a little turn of the glove and hold it there for a second and take a borderline pitch, look like a strike, and present it nicely to the home plate umpire and just hold it there to get the call. Little things like that from Kurt Suzuki are big things throughout the course of a season, throughout the course of a game. It's all in the presentation, and that was a lovely dish indeed. This one to the bottom of the eighth. David De Jesus, center field for the Cubs after he batted ninth. And their pitcher will be batting first. That will be Jeff Beliveau, 18th rounder back in 08. He is a rookie. And Beliveau appearing in his 14th big league game with a 3 ERA. You see the average against 239. Four pitch guy, fastball cutter, curveball change, fastball in the low 90s. He throws his off speed all the same, 13% of the time with the cutter, curve, and change. Well, good guys for an add-on run here. Bottom of the eighth rolling around. Tyler Clippard working. Finally got some work yesterday after because of a couple of losses, some blowout wins. Not getting a whole lot of work, but he got a quick save yesterday. Harper will lash that ball into right center. Makes a big turn. Sapelt gets it back in. And Bryce Harper checks in with his first base hit of the day. Anytime you get a ball past a guy that hasn't made an error in 118 games, you're doing something right. And Bryce Harper testing Darwin Barney. And I don't think you can hit a ball on the ground much harder than this. And getting some extension right there. Let's see it real time. I think Barney got a taste of what it's like to play third base. That ball got on so fast in second. Ryan Zimmerman 0 for 3, but he faces a lefty here. And the breaking ball is low. Well, the add-on run would be huge here. The Cubs have 3, 4, 5 due up in the ninth. And 297 against lefties this year with four home runs. Target away on two and zero. Oh. Zimmerman waits for the breaking ball. Pulls it down the third baseline. Harper, I think he's going to score. Bo Porter waves him around without a play. 2 nothing, Washington. On the infield or the outfield, they were not playing Ryan Zimmerman to hit the ball there. I mean, with a couple lefties on deck, Swain had to leave his lefty, and with LaRoche and Bernardino to follow, and you just love the matchup for the Nationals, and Ryan Zimmerman getting to face a left-hander, rocks the ball down the left field corner, and you knew Bryce Harper wasn't stopping no matter what Bo Porter said, and just like that, some instant offense for the Nats to go up 2-0. And watch the effort and the speed of Bryce Harper. And no way the helmet could stay on for the entire trip. No. Here's Adam LaRoche, one for three with a home run. I, I think we need to get Bryce a chin strap. What do you think? <laughs> What's after that, a face guard? No, just a chin strap. I just noticed, right, as Zimmerman came in, Josh Vitters was way off the line at third, and Soriano was out toward left center. And Ryan just pulled it where nobody was. Adam LaRoche takes one inside. The count's even 1-1. One, one. 
And that two run lead much better than a one run lead when you got the boppers coming up in the ninth Rizzo Soriano and Castro for the Cubs. Tyler Moore on deck for Bernardina. And they don't have a right hander up. They only have eight of them. Now it looks like Bowden will get back up. He's been up twice. So the call went to the bullpen very quickly when Tyler Moore showed up on deck. Trying to wait for that breaking ball. The count's even 2-2. Two, two. Nats have out hit the Cubs 9-4. to four. So that is 57 hits in the last four games. Is that good? It's a lot. More than good. Adam hacking on a fastball up and in. One out. So more for Bernardina. A lot of home games left on this home stand. Check it out. Nationals.com for all your ticket needs. Three more with the Cubs. Night games tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. Pitching change coming for the Cubs here. And then a day game on Saturday, Sunday, as the Nats will wrap it up against the Marlins who get here Friday night. So Dale Swain to the mound. Michael Bowden about to come in. So the Nats solve the left-hander Bellavo for a base hit, a double. Zimmerman drives in a run. Washington on top, two nothing. And bottom of the eighth, Ryan Zimmerman on second, two to nothing Nationals. And just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lights. Well, let's go back to the double by Ryan, right? He's standing on second base right now. Big part of this ball game. You just saw it. You're going to see it again whether you like it or not. A double down the corner. Bryce Harper chugging all the way around from first. Hitting the turbos right there as the helmet comes off. And just like that, some instant offense. Nats fans digging it. Little add on run for the Nats to make it two to nothing. Cubs fan in the middle is not digging it, however. So Tana Moore gets the call as the pinch hitter for Roger Bernardina. Michael Bowden, 25 year old right hander. Parts of the last four years with Boston. 37 games total before the Cubs picked him up. And Tyler Moore with a run sitting out of second base. Still only one out here in the eighth. Saw pitch up to his liking. He was hacking. See, that's where veteran guys like Chad Tracy, Mark DeRosa come in handy for a young player like Tyler Moore. You know, a guy that's played every day as a minor leaguer, doing a nice job of pinch hitting. And, and they'll tell you, hey, anything early in the count, you get up, 
get to hack and usually first pitch fastball, but he got a hanger right there. When you come off the bench, you got to come off the bench swinging and swinging hard. And Tyler's been okay as a pinch hitter. Five for 21, a homer, four RBIs. Bowden, interesting motion. He plucks the ball out of that glove very early. Cubs got him in the Marlin Bird deal. Former Nat was in the Cubs outfield to start the season. Traded on to Boston. This is the man they got for him. And Tyler Moore now with a long count for a pinch hitter. 2-2. And on a pitch well off the plate inside, Tyler manages a piece of it. Ian Desmond, another good day with a bat. Two for three, a couple of singles. His batting average starting to creep up toward 290. It out to left center. Soriano, easy play, two outs. Series continues tomorrow night. The Nats for the Tuesday evening game, we'll have Edwin Jackson on the mound against Chris Rousen. Edwin coming off one of his best outings. Gio coming off a complete game against Chris Volstead. That's Wednesday. Jordan Zimmerman, Justin Hermano. On Thursday, then the Marlins are in for three Friday nights. Saturday is a day game. Then the Nationals will move on to New York and Atlanta on their next road trip. After today, 28 games remaining. Desmond gets jammed. That one's over to Anthony Russo. The Nats are gone in the bottom of the eighth, but a big run gives Tyler Clifford a two-run save cushion when he comes out. Today in the shadow of our capital on Labor Day, 
Top of the ninth rolls around this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Washington Nationals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game. May not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. So Tyler Moore will stay in and play left field. Moore, Harper, and Worth across the outfield. And here comes Tyler Clipper. And Clipper four pitch guy, fastball cutter, curveball change. Fastball in the low to mid 90s. Did a nice job yesterday of using that to set up the changeup. And a two run save a lot easier than a one run save. And that being said, no save is easy. Anthony Rizzo against Tyler Clippard. 0 for 1. That is in there. Rizzo today 0 for 3. And then he gets him on a 93 to follow off to the left side. Rizzo un, uh, unable to do much with that 94. A couple of heaters. Does he have him set up for the changeup here? Soriano on deck. You make me aware, aware of a fastball in the inner half at 94. And I feel like I was late on that one. I have to cheat to get to it. It absolutely opens up the changeup down and away if you want to go to it. He does. It was over below. Nats trying to win three out of four against the Cubs so far this year and continue their dominance of the Central 22 and 9 coming in. There's a changeup. He really had him reaching. Nice piece hitting by Rizzo just to foul that off. Tyler Clipper trying to join the 30 safe club as a national. Two other men are members of that club. Where does that club hang out? Wherever they want. Really? But it's usually after about 8.30, 8.45 on a weeknight. Really? 3.30 on a holiday afternoon. Get together, smoke some cigars, watch football games. <laughs> well, I don't think Drew Storen's smoking cigars in his career right now, but someday he can. Yeah. Chad Cordero's probably puffed on a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's had 47 and 37 stay saves. Of course, Storen 43. And now Tyler trying to make it to 30. He throws him a breaking ball, and it was hanging right around the middle of the plate. Trying to fool a left handed power hitter. And now that gets the tying run into the batter's box. Clippert had him way behind in the count. Yeah, we talk all the time. It's not just the pitch you get a hit on, it's what preceded it. And I think Anthony Rizzo did a great job of spoiling a nasty change from Tyler Clippert. Just an emergency hack, fouled it off to get to that curveball to get himself on in a tie and run of the plate in the form of Alfonso Soriano, a guy with. 25 homers. Yep. Soriano career against Clippert 0 for 1 with a ground out. Yeah. 
That's a high strike with a fastball. Well, this is a guy that knows how to get on top of a high fastball. He struck out on one from Detweiler a second time up, but if he's looking for it, it doesn't matter how high it is, he can get on top. So 93 off to the right side. No balls and two strikes. Johnny and Ray here at the ballpark, as they are whenever the Nats are home. Nats extra post game presented by W.B. Mason when this one's over. Coming off a great weekend of the Nats about to embark on a good week. Trying to take care of business here in the ninth inning. 0-2 to Soriano. And Clippard fires the fastball up the ladder 94. That was a good shot of Davey Johnson the Nats dugout looking at his scorecard. I'm thinking about who's going to pitch hit for Wellington Castillo should he get up in this inning. Obviously Soriano's going to hit. You're not going to pinch hit for Castro, but with lefties all over the place on your bench, you would think that's the spot you're going to pinch hit for. Yeah, they got Brian LaHare sitting in there, young slugger with 15 home runs. Then a 1 2 that Soriano fouls back. Rizzo bluffed off of first like he was running, took about three steps and intended to stop. Rather small holiday crowd of 23,215 here today. You know, kind of inching their way toward the edge of the seats there after that base hit by Rizzo here in the ninth. Rizzo steals there is if you don't pay any attention to him at all and you absolutely give him second base. That throw over should stop him from running. And again, Soriano going straight upstairs with that bat to hack it back. We well, got a pitch right there that he was right on. Nats on top, 2 nothing. first out of the ninth inning. A long time coming here. And Soriano hits it straight up, deep to left center. Didn't miss tying this game by much on that bat barrel. And that's a huge first out. A pretty good hack by Soriano. Let's see the location of the pitch. Middle in to a power hitter, and he just caught it off the end, just got underneath it to keep that one in the ballpark. And now Clipper looking for a ground ball. Double play to Endless. Tough hitter. Starlin Castro, two for five career against Clipper with a home run. And he hits it in the air to right. That's playable for Jason Worth. Nats are one out away from starting another series on a good foot. Well, you know what I like about Tyler Clipper today? Obviously, a big out to get in this ball game yet. But he's going right after guys with the fastball. He's not messing around with too many change-ups, too many curves. He's challenging hitters, and that's what you want to see out of your closer. Going right after guys. Lots of confidence in the heater today from Tyler Clipper. Yeah, and Dale Swain stays with his right-handed hitting catcher, Wellington Castillo. 
with two outs here in the ninth. Castillo, four homers, 14 RBIs on the air. Has never faced Clippard. Runner goes. Nats give him second. It's a strike. So with the Braves leading their game, 6-1 to at home in the eighth inning. The Nats 2-0 here in the ninth at home. Trying to at least for a moment make it a seven-game lead. It's a change up in the dirt. Suzuki with the block. Counts even 1-1. One, one. Top of that 82. One ball and two strikes. Side pop up that's over the dugout. They hit it fair. Zimmerman would catch it. He's on the line. They've been standing for a while. They won't mind it as long as that third out's on the way. Base hit. Couple of fly balls here in the ninth. And a one two pitch. Young catcher hanging tough. Clippard has come out firing strikes. One, two, three, ninth against St. Louis yesterday. Taken longer for this one today. And a little flare out to center. It's a one run game. There goes the shutout. And it's a two to one contest. Quite an at bad by the young catcher. As Castillo fought one off his second hit of the day. I wouldn't be shocked if Campana doesn't run right here for Castillo. He's the fastest guy in their team. And great at bat fighting off a high fastball right off the label strong enough to throw it over Ian Desmond's head. Yeah here comes Tony Campana. Yeah, this guy can fly. 26 stolen bases only been caught three times so now the cat and mouse game starts with Campana at first representing the tie and run. The hitter is Josh Vitters who has walked in three trips today and he's over for his last 20. I mean there's going to be some throwovers. there might even be a pitch out. Because if you're Tony Campana, you're trying to steal second base right here. 
early in the count to give your hitter a chance to drive you in. And that's a huge lead he's got at first. Yeah, he's got his front foot beyond the cut of the grass. Clifford's going to pause for a while, throw over. The ball gets away, and Campana scampers to second base. Well, that was quick. Don't know if LaRoche tried to swipe the tag too early. This will tell the tale. Low throw. Yeah, that's skipped. That's on the pitcher. National second error of the day. The base hit Campana scores. He's that fast. Pretty good hack on a pitch 93 upstairs. One ball, one strike. Tyler Clipper, 22 pitches already here in the top of the ninth. out of Suzuki's glove after being foul tipped and a count of one and two again. And you see why Dale Swain has kept all the righties in there. Righties hitting better against Clipper than lefties. Just a little bit at 186. And this is a dilemma right now for Suzuki and Clipper. Vitters has been laid on two fastballs. Do you speed him up with a change or do you throw him another heater? He goes with the changeup. It's over but low. Two balls, two strikes. It's a good take. Saw, saw it early out of his hand, recognized it was off speed. How many guys have we seen swing over that pitch this year? And a 2 2. Swing and a miss, and the game is over. It took a while. Tyler Clippard, welcome to the 30 Save Club. The Nats are off to a good start against the Cubbies. I mean, that's what you have to do against that ball club. 30 games under 500. The Nats go to 30 games over 500. And you got to tip your cap to Jeff Samarja. You pitched a great game for the Cubbies to keep him in this one. They battled till the very end, but. Once again, just a well-played game by the Nationals. Great defense all day long and some clutch hitting from Adam LaRoche. One swing, the difference early. The Nats got a big add-on run that they would need on the Zimmerman double in the eighth inning. Washington wins it 2-1, to one, and they are 82-52. and 52.